A Hole Productions. Behold the Source Wall. Behind it is the single greatest secret of the universe. This is as far as I dare to go. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Beyond the Source Wall. And today we are covering DC fandom. And yes, I mean we, because I am not here alone. Uh, so I want to thank Gene Hoyle. Gene Hoyle, say hello to everyone. Introduce yourself and tell them where they can find you on social media before we jump into today's episode. Hey, Steve. Thanks for having me. Uh, as you said, my name is Gene. Um, I'm the host of Nerd Nation Radio, a podcast that's currently in hiatus, but coming back soon. Uh, if you Google search Nerd Nation Radio, we can be found on most podcast aggregates. I'm also an independent comic book creator and publisher. Um, currently, we are looking for submissions for Nerd Nation Presents. If you're a writer or an artist or a colorist or any of those things, contact me at genesplice 71 at yahoo.com for information on that. Absolutely. It's a blast having you again. Thanks for coming back for another episode. And everyone out there, yes, if you're an artist or writer, please contact Gene. Look him up. All of his information is down in the description box below and help him make some great comic books. Yes, in today's episode, we are going to talk about the DC Animated Universe. We have an animated movie that's out right now called Superman, Man of Tomorrow. We have another one coming out later this year called Batman, Death of the Family, and it's uh, actually like a choose-your-own-adventure kind of uh, animated movie. So we'll get into that. And they announced or talked about, one was already announced before, but they announced a couple new animated films that are coming out from DC Animation next year, too. And I want to get Gene's thoughts on that. So first, let's start with... Superman Man of Tomorrow, that is out, I think, as of now, of recording this episode, so people can go buy it digitally, and I think it comes out in uh, physical form in a couple weeks, so, uh, you know, go check it out if you're a big Superman fan, but Gene, before I give my thoughts, I gotta hear yours, what do you think of this new version of Superman? Okay, well, I, I did not watch the trailer fully until this morning, uh, I watched it briefly last night, but didn't pay too much attention. One thing, I, I do like the animated style, um, I think it's very comic -y. If that makes any sense? Yeah. Without being car without being cartoony, um, and I think it's perfect for a project like this. I'm also um, Superman's one of my very favorite characters, and I always like whenever they do a story set in the years after Smallville, but maybe just early Metropolis years or even before Metropolis. Um, and that, that seems to be very much what we're looking at here. Uh, you know, before he fully decides to become Superman, um, I think that's very interesting. I also find it interesting that two of the characters we see in this trailer are both Lobo and Martian Manhunter, both of whom are the last of their kind, just like Superman is. Yeah, it, it definitely seems like that's a theme uh, of, of the story, is, is about like what you do knowing that you're the last representation of your race. Um, and, and what role do you play on this new planet surrounded by a different race? So that seems to be something that's really neat, because obviously John Jones, it seems like he's been here a while in secret, and and Clark is kind of doing the opposite, where he's putting himself out there. And so that seems like it could lead to some great conversation and debate between those two characters. But then you have Lobo, who is just full-on Lobo all the time. And uh, he's just a crazy bastard that runs around and, and fights people. And uh, it looks like he's even rocking a, crypt a kryptonite ring in this. So I'm curious how he got a hold of that, how he knew that would weaken Superman, especially when, uh, you know, we see very... Like, at this point when he's fighting Superman, Superman's not even in his costume yet. Um, so I'm very intrigued. The animation style, I know a lot of people out there are comparing it to Archer. To me, I don't, I mean, yeah, I see the comparison, of course, but like, I don't think it's a big deal because there's been this house style for DC animated movies for most of their stuff. Like their, their shared universe movies have all looked very similar with that uh, uh, Phil Barassa style, which is fine, but I've, I've watched every single one of these animated films, all, you know, 40 plus or whatever they're out now and uh and i did i like seeing new things like batman ninja had a very new watercolor anime style i like things that do things differently and this looks different and that what better way to showcase that they're no longer doing the shared universe stuff than showing a new style like this so i for one like the animation i like that we're seeing lobo in this and also rudy jones uh is a part of this storyline and becomes the Parasite. And so Parasite is the other villain in this movie. And I'm very excited. They really revealed a, a picture of Parasite along with the uh, the trailer this weekend. And he looks great. He's all veiny looking. He looks creepy. You know, he drains, you know, people of their powers. But this feels like, and I don't know if you've ever read this story, uh, Gene, but it feels like a, a version of 
Superman American Alien by uh, by Max Landis. Have you ever read that comic? I did read that, and I actually want to say that maybe you're the reason I read it. I think uh-huh. so, I think so because I I actually did kind of kind of champion that book a little bit. I mean, I know there's issues out there with Max and on, on a personal level, but uh, some you know when I don't know that stuff, you know, I I I just read the comics. I'm I'm just there for the stories, and so uh, I genuinely thought that was an interesting take on the origin of Superman, and it dealt with him meeting Parasite and Lobo for the first time in those six issues. So. That's why I'm saying like this feels kind of like, and he's wearing the black with the helmet and the goggles in that book. That's where that look comes from, and that's in this animated movie. So it just feels like a, you know, kind of like a version of that story in, in my eyes. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned that. Yeah, because when I read American Alien, um, it was actually when I was in the hospital. I don't know, right after I had my aneurysm, right. somebody gave me those books. I don't know if you sent them to me, someone else sent them to me, but I read them in the hospital, and I really, really connected with it. I'd say uh, two other things, if you're interested, that is sort of in my mind also connect to this. There was, when DC was doing a bunch of novels in the early 2000s, like prose novels with their heroes, there was one called Last Sons that also has both Marsh, Marsh Bander and Lobo in it together in one story. Um, so I think that's, that's definitely something, if you like this, maybe you like that. Also, way back pre-crisis, uh, there was a four-issue miniseries called Superman The Secret Years. Mm-hmm. Which de- which deals with his time after leaving Smallville, but before reaching Metropolis. So those would definitely be my recommended reading list for people who maybe like this this cartoon. Nice. That's a wow. That's a great list. I forgot about the Secret Years. Um, that's a really great list. Last Sun's real. I can vouch for that one though. That's a really great book. Um, so yes, please go check out Man of Tomorrow. It's available now. I'll probably have a review of it. I usually like to wait for the physical copies to come out to review it because I feel like by that point, all the hardcore fans will have watched the movie and then I can talk about spoilers by then. Right, um, sure. Because most, I think most of the hardcore fans will buy the digital ones. That's what I do. I buy them digitally the day they come out. So I'll have that. And I think the, the Deathstroke animated movie, I'll have a review for that coming up soon too. J.M. Demetrius wrote that. And uh, I promised him on my podcast when I interviewed him that I would review it, and it's out now in physical form. So you guys will have my review in a week or so. Um, so let's move on. Uh, now, Man of Tomorrow, yes, go support it. Go pick it up. Buy it now on digital. And if you're watching this later, pick it up however you can because it, it, I'm sure it's going to be a great movie, and I'll have my review up at some point. Uh, they, but the other movie coming out this year from Animation DC is uh, Death of the Family or Death in the Family from uh, the Batman storyline where they're taking the animation style from the Under the Red Hood movie that they made years back which was awesome uh brendan vietti was actually the director of that who I, i'm a big fan of and and you know got to meet personally numerous times super nice guy um he th- it looks like a choose your own adventure animated film and i i gotta hear your thoughts on this because people have seen my trailer reaction so i feel like most people know what i think of this but i gotta hear what you think of this story um i, I like the concept the, the idea that it's a choose your own adventure excites me so much um, because of that, I will probably attempt to buy a physical copy and watch it with my son. So we can make those choices together and see where they go. Um, it's a fantastic idea, and I hope it takes off. Cause I'd like to see that with other uh, DC and even Marvel stuff. Um, it's, it's such a great idea. It's such, something that we finally have the technology to do, um, and that can, can happen now in this day and this time. And it's an interesting story, and especially neat because the original death of the family was kind of a choose your own adventure because we got to vote whether Robin lived or died and uh, unfortunately he was voted dead <laughs> yeah I voted to, to let him live and, and I my vote did not matter apparently so uh, this time my vote will matter and I'll, I'll ask him to live or I'll say that I want him to live and then I get to see the outcome of that um, I was just thinking though you said uh, you know you hope this is the start of something else you know what I'd really love to see is a, a return maybe to the uh, Bruce Tim Batman uh, Batman DC Universe they do a choose your own adventure like this but with booster gold oh my god don't even make <laughs> and, it happy. and then you have to choose in time when you go and maybe that could lead to a scene where Brewster meets Batman Beyond and then he can meet Static in a scene uh, from the Static Shock animated series he can go back to the days of the Superman animated series the old school uh, Batman animated series style before it switched over to the new style I think that could be a really fun choose your own adventure animated story to revisit one last time the Bruce Tim universe. Sure. Now a question for you. Uh, I guess this is kind of a tech question. 
can they do this in digital format, or will it have to be a physical copy? Um, if I'm, uh, that's a good question. I think they made a comment on that, and I and I um, I'm ashamed to say I don't remember what they answered, but they had an someone asked that question, and they answered it. And I want to say the the choose your own is only available on the physical copy. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, and the digital one is like uh, is like you know they just have like when you buy the movie it just has like four chapters or six chapters how many uh, bridges there are and you just click one and you just watch it all the way through like a single episode gotcha yeah, yeah. so um so yeah so i think that's how that's going to work um and i think each episode runs about like 20 minutes maybe uh so so really this is not like when you choose one path and you watch it one time all the way through making the the you know various decisions i think you're only getting the length of an animated episode uh but because there's different variations you can ultimately get four to six different animated episodes out of it right sure right so yeah i'm excited to see how that goes um but then we also have uh you know not only they talk about death of the family um and they you know that's coming out this fall they talked more about uh, uh the three movies that are coming out next year one of them is going to be split into two parts so we'll go through all of them but one of them we knew about before they announced it recently but now we got a little bit more information on it and that is batman soul of the dragon and i know yeah. i know you're a fan of the the side characters in this one so please tell us and tell the audience and t and, and tell me your excitement and and break down each of these four characters that are starring in this movie and what you are excited to see with them Okay, um, Richard Dragon, um, who's a character that actually had his own book way back in the 70s during the Kung Fu craze, uh, Richard Dragon Kung Fu Fighter. Um, it's, it's one of the few books I still have an entire run of. Uh, it was a neat book. It was a fun book. But Richard Dragon was actually brought back post-crisis as a kind of a mentor to um, Vic Sage to question in the, the, the great Dennis Cohen, Denny O'Neill book. And that's where I really fell in love with the character a lot. Um, he's a great character, and his best friend, the Bronze Tiger, who uh, for a long time was um, was brainwashed into being a villain. Um, I forget who did it and why, but he was a villain for quite a long time. So Richard managed to snap him out of it. And um, Bronze Tiger was also a major player in the in the early issues, at least, of um, John Ostrander's Suicide Squad. He was the good guy on the team. Right. Uh, you know, the one guy that Rick Flag trusted above all others. He's a terrific character. And then we have Lady Shiva, who um, basically had a reputation for being the greatest hand-to-hand -hand fighter in the DC Universe, beating people like Batman and Deathstroke and uh, almost everybody. I think she was finally defeated by maybe Nightwing at some point in time, but uh, for the most part, she hasn't lost battles. She beat, beat Vic Sage half to death a couple of times. In fact, she was the impetus for him becoming the different question we see in the Dennis Cohen, Danny O'Neill book, because she shows up and, and beats him up pretty much to death. Uh, and when he's reformed, because the old character, the old character of the question was very much written as a, a Steve Ditko guy with very Ayn Rand type philosophies. And this new question, after he died and came back, I mean, he didn't really die, but he almost died. Um, he came back and he had a new, kind of, a, it was a new lease on life for him. So he wanted to know different points of view he had questions which is you know where the name comes from in this version and uh i think she's an excellent character i can't wait to see her portrayed in this series yeah i'm very excited about this so the the, the premise of this is that it's set during the 70s like the the kung fu rise and the black boitation films it's kind of set during that era and it's batman in the 70s teaming up with these characters and I love that because it's it's a good way to do like um, one to shine a spotlight on these great characters who have always been great characters, um, but also you kind of you know do that like where you're like hey we want to do a more diverse Batman story where it's uh, it's not just not just diversity in skin and race and, and sex but just in style and uh, and and Batman's one of those characters that you can do that with as Brave and the Bold showed us and Batman Ninja showed us like in Gotham by Gaslamp like there's you can put Batman he's very he he's tangible like you can put him in anywhere and he can work if you do it really well and so seeing this with these characters with richard dragon bronze tiger lady shiva i'm so pumped i'm actually really pumped too because i believe michael jai white is coming back to voice bronze tiger he yes. he played bronze tiger in the arrowverse uh, series 
But I'm a big fan of his. Obviously, he played Spawn in the original Spawn film, and that's when I first took notice of him. I've seen most of his movies, actually, even the, the direct-to-video B action martial arts movies. I've loved this guy's stuff. And, and to me, to this day, like one of my favorite roles he's played is Black Dynamite. Um, so yes. I cannot wait to watch this. I'm so pumped for it. And I remember talking to you about it, and you were like, we got to talk about it on this episode, dude. That movie's going to be so awesome. <laughs> Yeah, animated wise, that that's that's one thing I'll uh, almost definitely try to catch on day one. Yeah, for sure. There's a lot of stuff to catch up on. And speaking of which, there's the last two movies we're gonna go through real quickly. We don't know much about them. We know a little bit about the comic version of one of them, but the other two movies they announced that are coming out next year for DC Animation is uh, the first one's called Justice Society World War II. Uh, so that's great. We're gonna get something Justice Society related, and we'll talk a little bit more about them in the next episode when we talk about Star Girl too. Uh, but then uh, we have The Long Halloween, which is finally, after years of being discussed, is going to be released as two movies, uh, a part one and a part two, which I'm very interested to see how they're going to capture the Tim Sale style for animation. Um, I'm really hoping they they try to do something a little faithful to Tim Sale's art style. Um, so we're going to get long, hopefully long ears and, and you know Batman in the gray and blue. But... Um, what do you? What are your thoughts on these movies? Obviously, we don't know much. I mean, we know a lot about How Long Halloween because we read the comics, but uh, you know, but they're probably going to change some things. But Justice Society World War Two, we don't know what that's adapting, what story that's adapting. At least I don't. Anyway, what are your thoughts on these two movies, Gene? I'm interested in how large the JSA will be in this book. Or, I'm sorry, in this in this com. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> in this cartoon. Yes. Um, because in. In, during World War II, um, to a point, the JSA was almost disbanded, and the All Star Squadron was formed, which was like you know a ton of people, uh, basically all the DC heroes from that period of time fighting in World War II. Um, I, I hope to see a lot of that because honestly, also All Star was my introduction to the JSA, and is probably my favorite iteration of the group. Um, I'm wondering if certain things from that series will, will come into play. Like there was, they actually had an incontinuity reason why these guys just didn't go to Germany and kill Hitler. Um, <laughs> right. And the reason the reason was they couldn't because um, Hitler had a magical artifact called the Spear of Destiny that kept heroes away from that that from that area. Right. Yep. Um, yeah. I, I'm curious to see that too. Like I, I'm. I'll be 100% honest. I'm not as well versed in the JSA. I mean, I have a lot of pockets of the DC Universe where I have blind spots. JSA is one of them as far as earlier stuff. I've obviously read everything past, like, you know, 1996 with Justice Society. But uh, but before, and then maybe some stuff during the crisis, like any time they popped up or were mentioned. But uh, after that, I mean, I, I, you know, or everything before that, I never have gone back and read any of the old stories, to be honest with you. I've read old Justice League and old Green Lantern and Superman and Wonder Woman, but never JSA. So I'm curious to see what they'll adapt. Or I think they said mostly this will be an original story. Um, but that's all we know. But I feel like they're still going to pull from some comics. So hopefully they pull from some of the ones you just mentioned because that sounds really awesome. I hope so. There's some neat characters that were in All Star that really haven't gotten any play since All Star Squadron. You know, like the, the female Firebrand was a big character, um, Tarantula. Um, just a lot of neat characters. And and this was pre crisis, so you also had a, a Superman during World War II and, you know, Shazam during World War II. And all those neat characters. So, uh, yeah, we'll see where they go with it. I am excited about anything JSA that comes out. Yeah, I remember on the panel, too, Matt Bomer, who's the guy who plays um, on Doom Patrol. Um, he plays, what's his name, Mis Mr. Negative? Um, uh -huh. And he's, uh, or is it is it Negative Man or Mr. Negative? A Negative Man. Yeah, Negative Man. That's right. I'm sorry. Uh, so, yeah, Negative Man, he's a... Uh, he he's so great as that role. I love Matt Bomer in Doom Patrol. That's such a fantastic yes. show. And uh, he's he was the voice of Superman on a, a animated movie called Superman Unbound, uh, where it's uh -huh. like him versus Brainiac. Um, but he had hinted at maybe you hearing a familiar voice again. So I don't know if he was referring to himself or what. But that would be great to have him come back and play Superman in a World War II Justice Society movie. Um, Absolutely. That'd be great because I feel like Superman is one of those characters that doesn't get a lot of love sometimes, especially from the company of Warner Brothers in DC. They say they love him, but everything is about Batman. And I understand why Batman is, is definitely 
you know, a brand that is successful on most cases. Um, but uh, but to me, I, I still does I still don't think that should be a detriment to Superman's rise or Wonder Woman's rise. I think all three of them should have their their moments. And so more Superman and more Wonder Woman. That's what I say. And but unfortunately, that's might be all we get for those characters is in a Justice Society movie because the last movie is Long Halloween, which is Batman again. So uh, so any thoughts on a Long Halloween movie? Well, they have to keep adapting Batman stuff. Uh, Long Halloween's not a bad way to go. Um, it was an interesting story. Uh, it was neat. It really showed us a certain period in Gotham history. Um, and it was like, you know, I'd say it was like the second year Batman was in action, somewhere around that period of time. Yeah, it's a, it takes place after year, like a year after year one. So, yeah, it would technically be year two, even though there already is a year two story. Right, yeah. Um, basically, I think and that's interesting enough. That's the same time period that the um, the new Batman movie is taking place in. It's true, and I and I I imagine because it starts off with a mystery, and um, we'll talk about uh, the Batman. Actually, we'll, we, we, I don't have that on my list here, but we will definitely do an episode on the Batman. Um, so we'll talk about that next for those of you listening. But yeah, Long Halloween. Uh, it does. It is a detective story. So if you are interested in the detective side of Batman, which clearly Matt Reeves is when he's making his new Batman movie, um, then you're going to love Long Halloween. If you've never read the book, go read it, because I'm sure the animated form will change uh, the story a little bit, like they did with Hush and other stories. But go read the the original comic, please. It's amazing. And then be ready for this animated film, because uh, I, you know, DC Animation stuff is really great, and I have no doubt they're going to knock it out of the park. Yeah, I really wish Marvel would step up their game the way DC does with their animated stuff. Yeah, me too. Uh, yeah, and it's weird because they're owned by Disney. You would think they would be all about great animation, but uh, Disney TV animation has, has never been really that good of a thing. True. Sadly. Um, awesome. So, Gene, thanks for sitting here talking with me about all these animated films. And those of you out there who are liking our DC fandom coverage, make sure you come back for the next episode. We will talk about the Batman. And then we'll also get into some, uh, you know, the, the live action TV show stuff as well. And then we'll wrap this all up this week with a, a, a look at the Milestone comic that was announced, along with John Ridley's Batman miniseries. And we'll talk a little bit about Three Jokers and the next DC fandom day. So make sure you don't miss out. Stay subscribed so you catch all those. And also check the links in the description box. Become a fan of Gene Hoyles. Awesome dude. One of my best friends in the world. And Gene, thank you so much for being here and being part of this show with me.